So now that we know the situation to look for when we find or are trying to figure out if something is unlinked, all of these will ensue, all of these will result if we see unlinked. The key thing there is to look for a 50-50 ratio of parental to recombinant gametes. Okay, If you have a 50-50 ratio, you are 110% looking at unlinked genes. Well now, what if you're looking at completely linked genes? Let's do the same exact thing, but see the difference. F1 test cross, TC. F1 test cross, just like we did here, it's going to be in this situation the same exact thing, but there's going to be a bit of a difference at the results section of this test cross. So you should already know why I'm doing this as my test cross, parent 1, parent 2. And then we're going to have, obviously, some gametes. So let's write those down. Let me rewrite this. We're going to have some gametes. And the gametes here are going to be a bit different. The gametes here are going to be the following capital D, capital E, lowercase d, lowercase e, a homozygous dominant and a homozygous recessive combination. And over here, we're only going to get this. Why did this just happen? Why do I not have four different possibilities and technically five because of the other guy? Why do I only have three, two, and then technically three because of this one right here? That is because we have complete linkage. D if it's dominant, will always pair and completely link with its dominant E partner. D, if it's recessive, will always and completely link with its recessive E partner. This is the relationship that is seen in this completely linked allele arrangement. Now, don't get confused or tripped up by the fact that, oh, I thought we just did this and we said D and E weren't un were unlinked. Well, I'm just doing a different example using the same alleles just to keep it consistent. Okay, this is not a real allelic example of anything. It's just for example purposes. So these are our gametes. They are not the same as our gametes in our unlinked scenario. That's where you should first sort of look if you want to compare the two. Look at the gametes. If you see something different than what you expect in the normal Mendelian gamete uh, of unlinked genes, then you know you're looking at something non-Mendelian. And then our results are, of course, thus going to be different because the inputs, let's say, the gametes that are being input into this offspring are different than the gametes being input into this offspring in this situation here. We get a 50-50 ratio here, 50% offspring, 50% offspring. You know what we're going to get on this side? We sort of alluded to it in our previous video. We're going to get one half of the offspring following this genotype and one half of the offspring following this genotype. If you do the cross, you will see that yourself. And so, what do you notice? You actually notice that 100%, half plus half gives you 100%, 1 fourth plus 1 fourth gives you 1 half, that's 50, same thing here. 100% of the offspring is equal to whose genotype? You should be able to get this. It's equal to our parental genotype. What's our parental genotype? It's right here in our F1 test cross. One over here, and then I'm gonna. I wouldn't. I don't want to draw another arrow, but you can sort of see another one right here. Both of these are our parental genotypes that we just got back in our F1 result cross. Okay, the results of our cross. This means that we had no recombinants. Let's write that down. No recombs. I'll say. Remember, what are recombinants? Recombinants are things that are not the parental genotype. We just got 100% of everything that was resulted as the parental genotype, thus we have no recombinants. If you see no recombinants, that tells you that what you're looking at, the genes that you're looking at, the alleles that you're looking at are completely linked. That's not already established over here, at least we can reiterate it down here. These are guys are definitely completely linked because of the lack of recombinants. Thus, it is considered a weird result, and thus it is considered a non-Mendelian result. A result that violates Mendel's second law of independent assortment. So this is how you would figure out whether or not a gene is unlinked or linked. These are the results that you would expect 
from both situations. 50-50 versus 100. And it's always in regards, and we always look back at to where did the parental genotype go? How much of it was conserved? In the unlinked situation, we established that only 50% of the parental genotype was conserved, and then 50% was changed, was turned into a recombinant that we called this. Over here, 110, well, 100 percent in terms of probability, um, was definitely the parental genotype being conserved. Thus, we had no recombination events. Thus, we had no recombinants. How can we have recombination if we know that no matter what, D and the dominant alleles will always stay with each other, and the dom and the recessive alleles will always stay with each other? This does not make sense to you. That there's no recombination possible. You can't mix and match these in any way, shape, or form like we did here simply because they are completely linked.